This is the Sanat Kumara. Welcome to the 62nd lecture of Namas University, Earth Spiritual Digital University, the place and community that grows you into fully soul-guided and Shambhala-assisted human beings. In Lessons 61 to 64, we talk about Earth's higher dimensional connections, how it all began, what purposes Lemuria and Atlantis served, how this period of Earth still affects all, and what our way forward looks like. This Lesson 62 is provided through Martina and is spoken by Deborah Lee Flynn. Today, we explore Lemuria, life on this continent, its workings, disillusion, and connecting to Atlantis. If you haven't listened to Lesson 61 before, please do so before you continue with this lesson. I start with how life felt and worked on the continent of Lemuria. I give you snippets and ask you to let them resonate with you. What of all of Lemuria's wisdom is still talking to you, asking to be lived now. Ready? Let's start. Lemuria literally means the blessed land of cooing, laughing, happiness that has it all. Lemuria was the paradise garden of the divine feminine, washed around by the sea of peace. It was intended to practice and expand the divine female qualities in all aspects of life in harmony with the environment. Divine feminine qualities need to be understood. I quote from my e-booklet, The Sanat Kumara, Affirmations, Invocations, and Insights for the Ambassadors of Light. The feminine sees what's possible, hears what's offered from above, draws it from the higher spheres, translates it for the worldly ears, mediates what's acceptable to all below in a common deed for one path as bros. With divine feminine I receive, I listen, I understand, I combine. I unite each and all into one path and to play along. All life in Lemuria was lived in a manner that put constant contact with and guidance by the divine source first. Everything evolved around this fundamental understanding in all aspects of life. The result was a deep-rooted connectedness with all life and that meant appreciation of and respect for it. People ate what nature provided. They gave freely to all others. They lived in harmony with dwarfs, elves, dragons, fairies, devas, animals of all kinds. There was no thinking or urge to be more or better than the neighbor. There was no urge to use one's free will to create independently from the divine source. Understanding the divine source better each day and being in touch was the primary concern. Scientists, researchers, and priests called the knowledgeable worked on it full time while the ordinary people made use of what they offered as wisdom. Researchers and scientists were concerned with understanding 
and expanding consciousness, feelings, frequencies, vibrations, and energies to higher dimensions. Women were equal to man and had equal rights. Knowledgeable women, female scientists, researchers, and priestesses were treated with great reverence. The whole person, with all its abilities, body and mind, was brought into science. That included intuition, experience, and the practical application, everything that brought them closer to their divine source. Their third eye was wide open, as was their heart consciousness. Imagine today we would still have researchers and scientists dedicated to scientific fields such as the soul and incarnations. Imagine we had connectors to the lower worlds, the energies in between, world and spaces. Imagine we had scientists specializing in fairies, connectors to the consciousness of the oceans and the earth, connectors to higher dimensions. Imagine we had scientists for symbols, dream weaving, reality creation, crystals, and many more areas of Lemurian knowledge today. I can assure you these areas of expertise and people skilled in them will return. The spiritual heart of Lemuria was a crystal named Aksha. A crystal is not merely a mineral structure. A crystal is a life form. The Aksha crystal knew everything and comprised nearly everything. This crystal had a shape of an octahedron. It was also an energy enhancer and sender, far superior to later abstract Atlantean crystal technology. This crystal was the collective unconscious and subconscious database of Lemuria. Each village on Lemuria had a crystal that tuned into this main crystal, which could also project images into the air. With its power, it held Lemuria in balance. In Lemuria, crystals functioned as the books, library, and internet of this continent. Lemurians communicated telepathically. Their written language consisted of symbols, symbol compositions, and mandalas. You still find the remains of it with Nordic ruins in Mayan, Egyptian, and Sumerian hieroglyphics, as well as in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean characters. Lemurians mentally wrote and painted images, combined them as thought packages, and stored them in crystals. The information was mentally sent and sealed into a crystal through the third eye in a clockwise rotating frequency and could be read with the same frequency in counterclockwise rotation. Children learned early on in school how to read and program crystals. Major symbols used in Lemuria were the double spiral, the complete circle, the triangle, and the double tetrahedron. All symbols, and there were many more than just mentioned, were drawn from a single line. That changed during the last roughly 3,000 years of Lemuria, when Atlantis came into existence, and its main crystal created frequency interference. From then on, the people of Lemuria had to integrate two hemispheres into their symbols. This also resulted in drawing symbols with more than one line. The Lemurians did not differentiate between the inner and outer world. They knew that the outer world was shaped to their inner world. Everything their five senses perceived as the outer world, the Lemurians perceived in their inner world as well. That means they could not only see colors, but also hear, taste, smell, and feel them. 
the Lemurians perceived all other beings in their totality. They got insights into the wholeness of each being they encountered. Compare that with how you live your life today. The mandala represented a higher order and reflected the philosophy and reality perception of the Lemurians. Knowledge about and use of mandalas was perceived as a science and left in the hands of specialized scientists who resided in one of the 33 crystal cities. Where were these crystal cities? The continent of Lemuria existed in a space continuum different from the geography known to you today. It is fair to say it covered Japan and Korea in the north, extended into what today is Southeast Asia and further into the Pacific Ocean. The continent had fjords in the north, woodlands in the west, followed by highlands and then wetlands in the east. North of the wetlands was land for agriculture. Northeast of the highlands, the Magic Valley nestled between high-rising white mountains. Here, in 33 crystal cities, each specialized in a particular science, the knowledgeable resided and researched. The Mandala experts resided in one of these 33 cities. The mandala scientists could set powerful forces into motion through a mandala. They knew the code of the cohesion of matter and the cosmos, the power of the space between the atoms. Their mandalas were rhythmic, organic, full of life and tension. Their knowledge was made use of by the common people in the clothes they wore. The shapes, colors, symbols, and crystals of the garments corresponded to frequency, vibration, and energy of the person and their soul connection. With increasing spiritual development, a person's clothes and garments became more and more splendid. Their inner world was expressed through their clothes. The Mandala Scientists also created large-scale mandalas to thank the divine and for festivities like harvest thanksgiving. Mandala work was only allowed to be conducted by people with a high level of purity and integrity. Now compare that to inventions of just the last 100 years. Inventions like dynamite in the atomic bomb came into life carried by a mixture of scientific curiosity, personal naivete, the will to overpower others, the will to form nature according to human needs, ignorant of the needs of all other life. Lemuria also had priests and priestesses. Their work for the people was based on the belief in unconditional purity of spirit, an undefiled love in the heart. They helped people to see without judgment and played a major part in rituals and specialized in various aspects of getting to know one's divine origin. Together with the old, wise, and shamans of the villages, as well as the scientists and researchers, they were part of the knowledgeable population of Lemuria. This knowledgeable population did not separate itself from the ordinary people. That only changed once off-earth visitors not only explored Lemuria, but also wanted to be integrated by forming bonds with females. Off-earth intervention on Earth is a special subject. I will come back to that when it's my turn again with four more lessons in mid-June. When the time came to unite the divine feminine culture of Lemuria with the divine masculine culture of Atlantis, the time to integrate the two aspects of the divine, knowledge transfer became a highly sensitive subject. The crystal scientists and experts decided to keep the most sensitive information in private crystal libraries 
instead of in the main crystal. The behaviors, power, and overpowering habits of off-earth visitors had made the Lemurians alert to the potential of misuse. Integrating with the Atlanteans posed a risk of misuse as well. The Lemurians had a profound understanding and feeling of objects, all life forms, and their position in relation to each other. They saw through their meaning and relationship in the greater context. This was possible through the integration of both hemispheres of the brain, which were balanced and in constant flux with each other. They also superimposed the perception of the third eye over the image created by the eyes. This enabled them to stand on a mountain and be at its foot at the same time. The indigenous peoples of the earth have this preserved knowledge, understanding, and the respective abilities to this day. It is necessary to make these wise people your teachers. The Lemurians knew no laws and no money. They lived from a moral and an ethical understanding of the unity of all life. The perception of ownership was unknown to them. They went through their lives feeling the connection with everything and the greater meaning of it. So, there was no need to create and shape their own rules or to take more from the land or others than needed to live in the moment. When it was time to integrate Lemurian and Atlantean divine abilities, all Lemurians were given the option to remain on Earth and serve at Atlantis or other continents, or to be taken away with the Lemurian continent by fire and sink into the ocean. The continent Lemuria was taken out of its mainly blissful state of isolation by volcanic eruptions. It sunk into the ocean in its own space continuum. Many Lemurians dared to serve in the next phase of life on Earth. The knowledgeable took their wisdom and crystals and opened a gap between the worlds. They arrived at Atlantis in spaceships. The others spread with the help of spaceships as well, but to less developed continents like Mu, located in what you today call the Pacific Hyperborea, close to the North Pole, and Kumari Kandam, and what today forms a huge part of the Indian Ocean. What happened when Atlantis and Lemurian Divine Feminine and Masculine came together? We will explore together in Lesson 63 next week. Until then, please take time to evaluate what Lemurian aspects still live inside of you and want to be expressed. That's all I wanted to share with you today. My love and blessings to all. This was the Sanat Kumara. Kumara Satsanga Kumara Satsanga Kawahirina Kawahirina Kumara Satsanga Kumara Satsanga